This is Twit. Now that GPUs are once again affordable, practically at MSRPs, possibly even in the near future to be below MSRP as the cryptocurrency world or the cryptocurrency mining community kind of thrashes about wondering when Bitcoin will spike again. We have NVIDIA, ladies and gentlemen, delivering something I really never expected to see and not entirely sure why we need one, um, a three gigabyte GTX 1050 for budget gamers that nestles in between, the, in between the sort of GTX 1050 and the GTX 1050 Ti. Um, this seems awesome for 1080p gamers with exactly that amount of money. <laughs> Not particularly useful for anybody with 1080p monitor that may be going to a higher resolution monitor in the relatively near future. What on I? What's the pricing on this like? Does anybody have benchmarks for it? Because they no, just sort of slid far, it out. As far as I know, market. not. The softest, yeah, it's it's an interesting options. product, and this this is kind of what happens. We've I seen like this pattern. A, interesting product. <laughs> yeah. We've seen this pattern a couple times from uh, NVIDIA and AMD in the past when you're kind of at the tail end of uh, a, a product generation that <clears throat> at least in the in the low end part of the segment, the lower cost segment, you tend to to find a reshuffling of things that occur because, you know, you, you've got this company, they're making a bunch of chips, they've made a bunch of product. They realize, okay, you know, we see in a six month window that this is going to be an EOL. Maybe we need to start uh, selling more of this product that we have built up and kind of segmenting it out a little bit differently if it helps. So um, the, the GTX 1050 three gigabyte that didn't exist mm -hmm. before, it was a, there was a two gigabyte model and then there was a four gigabyte 1050 Ti that both still exist. And this fits between them in some cases, but it's ahead of the 1050 Ti in some cases. Like if you look at the clock speeds, its clock speed is 100 megahertz faster uh, on its base clock for uh, the 1053 gig than the 1050 Ti. The peak theoretical compute, that T-flops measurement, the teraflops measurement, is actually higher on the 1053 gig than the 1050 Ti. But you do have three gigs memory instead of four. Uh, and your memory bandwidth is lower by a considerable margin, probably you know 30% or something like that, uh, because you drop from 128-bit memory bus to a 96-bit memory bus. And it's been a long time since I've seen anything under 128-bit memory bus on any of these products. Now, it does have a $160 price point, which airs it more towards the 1050 Ti 2 gig, uh, than the 1050 Ti, but it still has a 75 watt TDP, meaning it doesn't need an external power connection. Um, and I believe, looking just looking at specs, not having any of these cards in in my hand, that there will be some instances in which the performance of the 1053 gig will actually be better than the 1050 Ti because of that clock speed advantage. So even though the memory bandwidth, peak memory bandwidth, is lower on the on the 1053 gig part. It's it's depending on where that game is bottlenecked, memory or compute. I think you'll see that advantage, you know, go back and forth. And, and it goes up against the AMD RX five sixty kind of equal pricing segment. Um, mm -hmm. My my guess is that <sighs> Nvidia probably looked at this. They saw the competitive space, the 1050 Ti, the 1050 two gig. The 1050 Ti was about the same performance, but it was a little bit more expensive. So is it easier to drop that price or is it easier to just kind of shuffle in this new part towards the end? Uh, and I think it mostly falls in there. And this is also that segment of the market where we're literally a rebate here or there, 10 bucks here or there suddenly changes that comparison pretty dramatically. And it's really hard to do really accurate uh, uh, performance, you know, per dollar measurements that are consistent over a longer period of time because of those those kind of frequent price changes. So this to me is is not indicative of uh, anybody being desperate for anything or you know, Nvidia feeling like it's losing market share or anything like that. It's it's really a well, we have this this batch of chips that maybe the memory controller wasn't up to snuff and they can make it a 96 bit instead of a, a 128 bit. You know, maybe they, that gives them access to 25,000 additional chips, pieces of silicon that they can sell and, and they can get it on the market and get it through these partners. I mean, this is, 
it's 1080p or below gaming. It's esports gaming. You know, your League of Legends, your Counter Strike, your uh, uh, Dota 2, those those class of games. This is not what you're going to play Far Cry 5 on, probably. Um, but uh, it's it'll be interesting. I, I, I've reached out to a couple of people to see if anybody wanted to send one. Nobody expressed an extreme amount of interest in getting it done. I think because probably when you evaluate it uh, at performance levels, it's going to actually confuse things a little bit. So it sounds like a card to avoid. No, I mean, if this, if you're, if you're a 200 or sub $200 card, it may actually be a good card, right? Like okay. it may be better than the 1050 TI. You can get it. If you can get it for 30 bucks less, the 1050 Ti and it offers close to the same performance level, maybe even a little bit above it in some random cases. Then it might be worth looking at. Um, there might be the better solution of those, but mm -hmm. it does kind of it just it just makes it a little bit more confusing. Maybe right. we'll get them in. We have 1050s, we have 1050 Ti's, so now we can we can sandwich this guy in between. But as is always the case with with you know, budget price graphics cards, the differences in performance between them tends to be very small and minute. And it's not until you jump up from 1060 to 1070 that you start to see sizable gaps that in right. my view, at least, uh, are warranting enough of like really careful consideration of what your budget is. So, so many thoughts, none of which will be useful. It's just, it's it, okay. So better than the two gigabyte 1050 TX, Probably, I don't know. It, it's okay. If you're gaming at anything higher than 1080, I would say get a 1060 as your minimum. Yeah, I mean, honestly, probably if you go over, if you're going to 25 by 14, you probably want t uh, 1070 class performance or above. Uh, but 10, you know, for 1080p, the, the 1060 six gig card is probably going to be my card of choice in that in that family. Um, because when you get below that, you're, you're going to start looking at having to scale back on your image quality settings, not just easily hit the very high button and move on with your life, which is not, it doesn't make it a, it's not a big deal. It's easy enough mm -hmm. to do to change the settings in these games, but it's just something where when you get below 1060, it's probably because you have a cost sensitive build sure. that you're that you're focusing on as opposed to like ah, give me whatever is good enough for 1080p which i would consider right. to be the 1060 1060 series yeah but i mean you're looking at a 150 dollar jump at msrp between the 1060 and the 1070 right. but yeah a huge jump in performance too just yep. buy the most expensive cards you can buy up to 600 dollars and that sounds at us later <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know. The memory bandwidth on that was kind of freaking me out on that that GTX 1050 three gigabyte. Um, I mean, it's low. Don't get me wrong, it's low. But I, I, they wouldn't. I don't know. So I mean, it's it's actually lower than the 1050 as well, the two gig mm -hmm. card, and yeah. but it does have a gig more memory. So it's it's a really confusing thing. In in graphics card, you know, when you're when you're specking out a GPU, it's always a balance of you know, True. how much pixel processing do I need? How much geometry processing? How many texture, how much texture processing? How much memory bandwidth do I need? And the more games come out, the more profiles that NVIDIA can look at uh, and, and, and well, how many games they can profile with. They go, eh, as it turns out, we can get away with a little bit less memory bandwidth because the people mm -hmm. who are gaming on this aren't playing Far Cry 5. And those are the ones that have the higher resolution textures, et cetera, et cetera. So there's just, my, I don't think they're putting out a game or a card that's suddenly going to uh, change that paradigm much, that they're going to somehow screw up the balancing act. I just want to see what the numbers for that look like versus the 1050 Ti. I'm, I'm very agree. curious. Uh, if they're really good, maybe that's why they're launching it so quietly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because they don't want to cannibalize 1050 Ti sales. 